more now in our top Wall Street story. That's the trial of billionaire Raj Rajaratnam, the founder of the Galleon Group. Our next guest says this is barely the end of the beginning of the government's attempt to crack down on insider trading. Seth Berenswag, managing partner at Berenswag Leonard, the firm of course specializes in corporate and executive compliance issues. So I know, Seth, as you say, you've been watching this trial and this uh, building of a case quite carefully here. For a conviction to happen, specifically, what does the jury need to be convinced of? Well, the jury needs to be convinced beyond a reasonable doubt that Raj Rajaratnam intentionally uh, flouted what's called the, uh, the, the, the 10B rules of uh, tr engaging in insider trading using material non-public information for private gain. It's a form of insider trading. It's securities fraud. And they have to show that evidence beyond a reasonable doubt. The Justice Department understands that this is one of the biggest cases in criminal prosecutions that it's ever had. And I believe that it's going to be ushering in a new era of criminal prosecutions for insider trading and fraud in the business world. So you might as well just take a seat and buckle in because it's going to be a long ride. This is a huge trial, but this is just the beginning. Yeah, it is. On this day one, they're selecting the jury. So uh, what we do know, I mean, jury selections and art. Look at some of the Absolutely. questions. We're going to put them up on screen here. Some of the questions that we do know are being asked of the jury today. Uh, you know, would you be distracted by wealthy individuals, multi-million dollar transactions? Would that make you difficult to decide fairly? Uh, when you look at Americans with South Asian heritage, would that impact your decision? This one you see on, right. on screen as well is, you know, would you be impacted by insider trading laws? Do you have strong convictions about them? Would any of these things cloud your judgment? Um, are these the kind of questions you would be asking? I mean, what would you be looking for for a jury member? Well. Sure, I would be asking those types of questions, and I would also be asking them whether they've been the victim of some kind of a financial fraud. Have they personally experienced some kind of a financial loss? Because that's going to show some bias or prejudice. And that's an interesting gateway, because that's one of the reasons why this is such a huge risk for both the defendant and the government. The government understands that this is a critical hour. People all over the United States have been suffering losses because of insider trading, because of fraud issues. They see these facts, and they think that there are rich people that are able to participate in secret phone calls for the privileged few. But the government understands that in order to have confidence in the marketplace, we need to have free markets and not fixed markets. So I would delve into the jury pool, make sure that we understand, as will the defense, whether they've even been the victim of some kind of uh, a serious loss or fraud. Uh, it's all too prevalent. And at the end of the day, the government's going to really have two building blocks for its case. First, they're going to have over 90 hours worth of recorded phone conversations. Uh, they won't be playing all of it, um, but that's very sensitive. And it's going to be a mountain of evidence that the defendant's going to have to fight through, and they're going to have a, a long list of witnesses that will be coming through. Not only people that have pled guilty, but also people from within the Galleon Group that are going to be talking about how this defendant knew a lot in a very short period of time, and it's going to raise some very serious questions here. How has this already changed the way you deal with cases? I mean, the, the nature of some of the tools used here, wiretapping, et cetera. Has this case essentially already had an impact without a conviction? Well, absolutely, and that's a great question. Our firm deals with corporate compliance and, and white-collar issues, among other things. And you have to understand that this is a new era in Washington and New York. These cases, the, this, the United States Attorney's Office has made it very clear. Ever since Raz Rajaratnam's arrest, they've said, look, we consider this to be similar to a, a, a mobster case. Uh, and it's like scenes out of a Hollywood movie. You have aggressive approaches, new prosecution and investigation methods, wiretapping. You have mm -hmm. to have new compliance and new approaches. Because if you don't recognize this environment, it's a problem. All right. Thank you very much. And I know uh, we're going to have to keep an eye on this story as it develops. Check back in with you. Appreciate your time today. Stay with us on